My presentation is mostly from a scientific point of view. But uh, it yeah. but uh, it matches uh, the UFO phenomena. And uh, here I would like to present some uh, criticism about some scientific uh, adopted uh, postulates about space and about the physical vacuum. There is a methodological error in the Michelson-Morley experiment. And uh, this famous experiment written in every textbook claims that uh, it uh, proves that the ether doesn't exist. This experiment is uh, done about 1984. But later, 70 years later, it was found that uh, the error is of methodological reason because in that time the, the relativistic uh, effects and the theory has not been well understood. And the experiment is made by the very precisely but using interferometric methods. And interferometric methods, uh, the light detection difference doesn't appear between, because two counterfeit effects fight each other. One is the Doppler shift and another is a relativistic uh, clock range change. And they compensate the effect so it appears that the light velocity, light velocity doesn't depend on the motion of the object. Seventy years later, one professor, Stefan Marinov, made a number of experiments that he was able to detect the difference in light velocity. So, in fact, in the lab conditions, he detected uh, motion through space, through some medium. And this motion is with a velocity about 300 kilometers per second. In fact, this is against the whole vision about the uh, the vision about the universe, uh, the, big Mac bang, the Big Bang model, according to which we have to move with the speed of light. In fact, Michelson predicted some experiments, but he was not funded with the chopped light velocity instead of, uh, 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 instead of continuous. And when in 1920, Einstein claimed that the general theory of relativity without ether is unthinkable. But he still excluded the possibility of uh, the material nature of the ether as envisioned by Faraday and Maxwell because not working model has been suggested so far. Detection of the absolute motion means existence of space medium. The, then the question is how we can understand such enigmatic phenomena like UFO, and there is a lot of other phenomena in physics, just are not understood and uh, without such basic uh, uh, understanding of the space that there is a medium. And if there is a medium, it is obvious that should be another way of movement of this medium. Like the boat is moving in the sea and the uh, submarine not interacting with the continent, but interacting with the medium. So the true physical model of the space medium must put a light on the relation also between the gravitational, electrical, and magnetic field, and must understand deeper the gravity and inertia. The, the basic structure of matter, which was published initially seven years ago, in fact started from such concept of uh, submaterial particles. Uh, and. Uh, these two submaterial particles interact in pure s empty space, which is, uh, in a classic sense, not by gravitation, but by supergravitation. That is uh, inverse proportional to the cube of the distance. And uh, 
But uh, these particles con congregate in uh, some structures, well-defined structures, and such kind of structure defined thing, the, the space. So in the space, this structure propagates uh, uh, in distance the forces between two material objects through this structure, and it becomes the Newton law of gravity, which is the inverse proportional to the square of this distance. So it is obvious if this structure propagates the Newtonian, Newtonian gravity and also the light electromagnetic waves, so some kind of modulation of this structure could perform effects that appear enigmatic. Uh, I don't have a time to explain here the physics. It is pretty well explain in the book, and, uh, but uh, by modeling the, the basic element of the space, uh, this structure, the lying structure I call cosmic lattice, and the individual nos node of the cosmic lattice, it has a shape of four rods, and uh, they are, because they have of two uh, fundamental particles, and they, they, uh, they were bred in the such a way that they define the basic uh, fundamental constant. And uh, the relation between electrical, magnetic, and gravitational field is become apparent when investigated these oscillations and the, this supergravitational law. Another thing quite important is that uh, this uh, sub elementary particles that are much, much smaller than elementary particles, um, they are indestructible matter. They not only build the space, but they also build the structure of the elementary particle, material structure. And here uh, I have unveiled the material structure of the electron, the smallest particle stable, that match all the features, physical features of the electron, and also unveil some very important feature. That electron have oscillation frequency, and one of the oscillation frequency of the electron matches the oscillation frequency of the cosmic lattice knot. So the electron, when moves, he is like some, uh, like a screw, but simultaneously oscillate. And this makes quantum mechanical interaction. And that's why he has preferable velocity that match excellently the quantum velocity in the Bohr atomic model. And this is important because in this way, the electron, we can understand how the electron interact quantum mechanically with this cosmic lattice. Number of important parameters are derived from their <coughs> connected with the non-physical parameters. One is the static cosmic lattice pressure. And it is important because it is like a pressure uh, defining uh, the pressure on the uh, internal structure of elementary particles that is impenetrable to this uh, cosmic lattice and define the Newton's mass. So, in fact, the, the mass that participate in all equations is not something constant. It appears as a pressure of the, this cosmic lattice. Then the notion is that if some parameters of the physical vacuum, I called cosmic lattice, are modulated, then you could change the mass of the object. And from here, uh, it is predicted one gravito-inertial mass effect. And uh, it is based on this that uh, these cosmic lattice nodes, they have the same frequency and easy, and easy synchronized. And in fact, all the time they are synchronized with one parameter, um, Compton length, that is involved in definition the velocity of light. Here, we don't have to take just velocity of light like a postulate, but we see why it is constant and what parameters define the light velocity. 
And this self-synchronization is almost persistent, but uh, <coughs> there is a conclusion that uh, if you disturb the self-synchronization and this cosmic lattice knot around the solid object, this should affect the gravitational and inertial mass with simultaneous disturbance of the light and electromagnetic waves in the surrounding zone. So, in fact, we have here the uh, Newtonian equation, but we have change of the force by the change of the mass. And the theory of a symmetrical disturbance of the uh, self-synchronization uh, is by using the unveils electrons properties. Because to make such disturbance, we have to reach one super high frequency, that is a Compton frequency, 1.236, 10 power of 20. How to reach this? In fact, it could be reached with much lower frequency by using electrons that have the same frequency, but properly motion of this electron accelerating by a uh, much lower acceptable alternative frequency, what could reach this frequency, what can modulate the, the cosmic lattice, the physical lat vacuum. For this reason, was investigated electromagnetic plasma, then it was identified the technology and the, uh, the envision methods should work uh, at normal pressure and in vacuum if there is a proper gas surrounding. Here are some laboratory experiments are shown. Here the uh, force field actuator, and uh, here also one demonstration of the predicted effect. The, in the last conference of the uh, uh, society annual meeting, in fact, I show a demonstration of rotating based on properly activated plasma actuators. And uh, now I have another uh, effect, that, uh, another demonstration. I enclosed all the activator in the volume of cylinder. Activating this uh, actuator, the whole cylinder moves. In fact, this contradicts to the Newton's law of motion because if you in one wagon and try to, uh, uh, to push inside the wagon to move, it's not, it doesn't. But in this case, it moves. So the only explanation is that the gravitational mass of this object, actuator, is affected, and it is affected also unidirectionally by properly activated surrounding plasma of the object. And here, if, you, if we investigate a lot of this phenomena, the effects about UFO, we found so much similarity that is predicted by this physical effect. The conclusions are that the predicted gravito-inertial effect, I call stimulated anomalous reaction to gravity, relies on the physical principle not envisioned from the classical and modern physics. Uh, the Sark effect is a change of the physical vacuum parameters which define the gravito-inertial mass. The propulsion could be used uh, in the atmospheric and in deep space environment. Also, the effects in this uh, that match the effects of the observed phenomena are quite understandable and explainable from this point of view. But uh, the conclusion is that the, this effect is suitable only for interplanetary and deep space travel, but not for replacing the jet propulsion system in the Earth's atmosphere. Why? Because this modulation of space may, uh, may have some unwanted effects that uh, some case could be dangerous. For example, there is one unwanted effect, Hutchison effect, that I apparently also received in my uh, experiments, as a result of which uh, for example, in one of my experiments, this uh, rod that I use as an inductor apparently get uh, uh, sparks, unwanted sparks, and this rod was uh, 
curved just for the two seconds. It's a, you could not curve this rod for 5,000 degrees heating by hours. And it is curved without any crack. So this effect, in fact, is something changing something of the space environment, of the physical vacuum. And uh, one of the f major reason is this, just to, in, to make a test of the speed of light. Repeat this experiment that Stefan Marinov repeat, and see that something is ex exists in the space. Thank you. Now we have time for five minutes of questions. Can you use, can you use this? Okay, thank you. All right, let's start on this side of the room. Questions? Okay, we'll start with York on that side. Uh, I am indebted to Tom Van Flandern for pointing out some months ago that the uh, the existence of the global positioning satellite system and the fact that people can actually uh, succeed in navigating with it consists of an empirical demonstration that the speed of light is in fact constant and isotropic in the environment of Earth and is an observation with, with now billions of instances and thousands more accumulating every day. Therefore, uh, this would seem to be an overwhelming body of evidence that anything, any experiment that has claimed to find a uh, velocity relative to the medium of electrodynamic, of electromagnetic propagation is simply wrong. Okay. If you make uh, measurements of the velocity of, of light without a uh, source that is not interrupted, not in sequences, uh, the Doppler shift Com is compensated by the clock rate change from the special relativity. So this effect is not observable. But if you make a measurement by intercepting a flight in two directions and both shot at work simultaneously, as the experiment of the Stefan Marinov, and not only his, but there is another experiment that clearly detects the motion of the, our solar system through the Milky Way. And it is detected in the lab, in the laboratory. And this experiment uh, uh, in the peer review journals. Um, I, unfortunately, I can't tell enough from just this presentation to, to really understand your phenomena. Is there something simple that I could do in my laboratory to test this theory? Uh. Uh, in fact, uh, this phenomena is uh, predicted by the theory. Uh, the theory spans from uh, different fields of physics, so many experiments are explained by the theory. But this phenomena that I, this, that, that I uh, uh, receive and this demonstrating in the physical lab could be repeat. It is repeatable it could be demonstrated for the people that want to. Are there any further questions? Dr. Starks, thank you very much. <laughs>